The Pal World data mine has been amazing because now we know everything about each of the pals and we can make better informed decisions. And that is what this video is going to be about. If you enjoy it, please leave a like, share with all your friends, and comment your thoughts, tips, tricks, advice, and discoveries down below. So I kind of just want to go through this in order and talk about the best pals for thing. Because there's a bit more nuance to the game than, oh, what's the highest thing? Drummond Tide Ignis? Okay, I'll just go out and grab it. But also the game has like really weird interactions to where if you can run out into the desert and then find a large egg, you could just hatch a Suzaku and then boom, early three fire making. So area difficulty, levels, and catch rate are going to apply. But if you're in the hyper end game, then it's also worth noting like, hey, I need to go out and farm a lot of Blazemut because three fire, four mining. That's just cracked, and if I'm using anything else for mining, then I'm just doing it wrong. And then the accessibility and utility dials back from there, but there's still some really good pals. Like, level 15, 16, you get a Wixen, that's 3 crafting, and then 2 fire. That's really, really good. As for the watering of pals, okay, there's Jormantide again, sure thing. But then the breeding also gets kind of crazy. So, Blazemut, one of the highest value breeding, so you don't really have too much to do with that. But Jormantide is surprisingly accessible. Hell Zephyr Nightwing, that's Jormantide. That's doable like level 20. Relaxaurus Elizabeth, same thing. So breeding chain optimizations make the game super duper wacky, and then you can also get something like the heat resistant pelt armor, run out to the desert, and again, just find an egg that gives you something of high value that you can then use for breeding, or just get what you're looking for to begin with. Azure Robe is three watering. A lot more people are realizing, hey, if I just go to the nature reserve and I don't get caught, I can get some pretty good pals early on. Pen King, a lot of people just hatch this from like a random large aqua egg that they find. And then the watering is just kind of limited in that way. But yeah, you just get a strong watering pal, you're good to go. Pen King, really good because it also has the two mining and two handiwork. So just kind of do whatever you need on the base. Planting. So I've just kind of found that Verdash is like one of the most busted pals to have in general. Only two planting, but then three handiwork, three gathering, which synergizes with that. And Verdash also has two transport. So Verdash OP, and I did my cake making guide kind of showing like, oh, you can also just kind of breed Verdash really early on if you want to get it before the level 35 uh, arena encounter that it has. Lilene with the four harvesting, two planting. Pretty late game, I don't know if there's any cheese for it, but then there's Broncherry. Broncherry is fairly early game, maybe a little bit of a difficult fight, but once you start catching those, you have three planting. Doesn't do anything else, maybe you don't need anything else for a while. Uh, Batalia, though, is pretty close to Verdash. Actually, we kind of like a swapped around Verdash, but I don't think Patalia has the transporting. Yeah, it has a one transporting, so... Do you want two transporting, three planting, or do you want two planting, two transporting? Gets a bit more interesting with electricity generation. Not a lot of pals have it, but it's also kind of niche and more like mid-late game since you need to power things like your assembly lines and some other workstations. But uh, Univolt can find that fairly early on. Rayhound gets into the desert. Dinosaur Lux is more special. Grizzbolt. Mossanda and then Relaxor. So just, yeah, stuff happens, or you can have your little guys spark it, Jolt Hawk. Having to spark it around. Not bad, because he also has a little bit of handiwork. And will move things around when he's not powering electricity. So spark it's viable. I liked having him around. This also shows that Orzerk is just one of the best pals, so it's going to fill up your electricity really quick, and then if you're not using it, it's just going to have a three transport. So one of the best transport, and then it can get called to do some decent crafting, or you put it on the line. So it's not going to get distracted, it's not going to like lock itself into mining or gathering, just always going to be ready to help. And it's going to provide a good amount of help when it does. Four gathering on the Frostalian Noct, and it makes me wonder if the intention is that you just get the four for that thing in the late game, and that's all that you need on the base, even if it doesn't really do much of anything else. Because having four in work suitability is just so insanely fast, especially if you put something like Artisan on it. And Frostalian Noct has a unique breeding combo, but that means you just catch Hell Zephyr till you get Artisan, you breed for it, and then profit, and you don't need anything else. But then Verdash has three, and the other thing. So I guess it's going to take some research and anecdotal claims to kind of feel like what's better. Do you just want Lilene, Frostalian Noct, and that's all of your planting and harvesting, you don't need it on any other pals, 
Or do you want, you know, Verdash and then some other ones bouncing out and then doing multiple rolls throughout the base? And then we have wood cutting. So yeah, the Dinosum is bugged. Wumpo Botan also bringing a lot of our things to the base, like a four transport. And that thing's just chilling on one of the starter islands. It is high level, but it's actually accessible. And then still not too crazy in the nature area. Uh, Warsect, Bushi, stuff like that. So yeah, the wood cutting does whatever. Normally you just have like a lot of other pals. Like you have Mossanda hanging around. You got Memoris or Verdash, and then they're just going to be doing that anyways. But uh, some pretty good ones. And Bushi, just a really good all-rounder all when you just have it running around the base. Mining. So we talked about Blazema. We also have the Astagon. However, how hard is it to breed for him? Is there anything special? kind of opened up but you also need like rare and powerful pals grizzbolt cryolinks something might be there however with these like pseudo legendary pals that are late in the decks it might just be hey get to level 50 get to ultra spheres and start farming this like when you've beaten the game and you want to perfectly optimize your base just for like completionist sake and min maxing then you can look to some of these pals what else does he have just the four mining, which means Blaze much just better because it also has the three fire making. However, there could be an argument for a pal that is just dedicated mining that you don't have to have any other pal with a mining stat as long as Astagon is just getting you infinity rocks forever. So that's the thing. Ministing. I don't think Ministing brings anything to the base, so it's more so going to be a combat pal. Uh, Dig twice, three mining. That's going to be coal mining. That's going to be early accessibility in the desert. Retiro little later but also bringing you the three fire making so yeah once you start getting access to some of these anubis is interesting because four crafting so that's going to be really good to have on an assembly line and then the other ones that we've talked about just kind of there where it's like vixen early three huge lunaris weird breeding accessibility where you just kind of stumble into it then a few other pals around the base so anubis pretty strong problem is if it gets fixated on mining but i guess you could throw it onto an assembly line and hope that it actually just kind of assigns to that for bigger projects oil i have no idea uh medicine making i don't make medicine i haven't dabbled in that i haven't seen it as useful they let though just bringing you three fell that very early three for crafting medicine and then some other ones just kind of randomly have it and maybe a little bit of extra utility same thing with cooling it just kind of feels weird to have a pal do nothing but keep your food cold if you have like crazy manufacturing you can just replace whatever gets spoiled for the most part four on the frostallion frostallion not really having any base utility but i guess if you want to keep things cold you can do that unless the super mega hyper in game is that sweaty and you want like the best food buffs and perks and then you just want to keep them in the fridge forever that way they don't really spoil that much and it's okay even if it means dedicating a cryolinks just to that transport so wumpo busted on the transport J just crazy like that uh transport gets a little sketchy until the ai and pathing update goes through because i don't trust any of these birds with transporting anything because they're going to get stuck on something and they usually bug out and then they starve and then they get incapacitated so i don't have much to say about that however like oh van worm kind of easy hell zephyr kind of early and then just yeah a lot of the big birds have three transports so if you're lacking at moving things around the base you can just slap one of those on there and it's going to be really good because i think most of them only have that so we have fire making on van worm and then three transport Hell's Effort does nothing but a three transport. If Quivern doesn't get stuck mining, three transport, and then some of the other ones as well. Grizzbolt transporting when it's not fueling electricity, and everyone else is pretty good. And then ranching is based on their drops. I think there might be something with Sibilix for money making, but even then, still seems really slow. Even like the most optimal thing of oh, five artisan Sibilix that are like rank two three i don't i don't ever see that much work being put into some kind of system to actually be enough payout in the end where it's like well it is dropping cloth and that's worth 40 each but then you don't really get any value back out of it then everything else yeah kind of whatever mao i think is fraudulent automatic gold farm everything else you craft is automatic gold just sell it breeding rank that was in my breeding combinations video also it wasn't a large egg for suzaku it was a huge egg so we were hatching that one for a while and just kind of shows like, yeah, egg things get kind of crazy. But breeding rank accessibility is something to explore where you just go out and get Grizzbolt 
and if you manage the level 20 Grizzbolt or level 19 by the time you have breeding, you now gain access to pretty much all of this. Relaxorus, very good for that accessibility and unlocking breeding chains. And if you just have that going, you can get into some deep stuff. Same thing on the Hell Zephyr. Yeah, the accessibility gets kind of weird for breeding usage on those stats. Mostly, biggest thing to point out. Now as for combat stats, I think people just kind of catch their pals, hope for good enough passives, maybe breed a couple of stronger pals, and combat isn't really fully well explored because you can beat the game without having like min-max and super duper optimized, so competitive, who even knows where that's going to go and also like making sense of all this. Damage calculations, I don't think anyone has an understanding of damage calculations at this time in PAL world. There's a really hard drop off if you're under leveled. There's some pretty crazy ramp up as well. Level interactions. So, so like I don't know the value of this, but wow, Mamorist has higher health than anything. And you kind of feel that when you're fighting your first Mamorist kind of in the starting area and trying to catch one for yourself. But then, low defense, so it's kind of like a balloon, and then you can see legendary pals like, oh, 140, 135. And then, like, oh, Frostallion knock, just objectively better than Frostallion, minus the stats. But any pal can learn any move, except for, like, some exclusive move interactions. Or like species based moves maybe so that's also something that needs more exploration and research which is like yeah what's a really good move set on a pal right now people are just taking what they can get throw the pal out there damage is damage and the rest you make up for with your gun wow though shadow beak looking nuts 120 hit points 140 defense absolute tank high amount of melee damage and then shot is range damage so some abilities are going to interact that way could also explain why there's a drop off because some pals have like a big difference between their melee and their shot and some pals are going to excel more at range so knowing this is going to be good for optimizing a moveset where it's like yes you want to use more ranged and special attacks on something like a frostallion and even the necromus or the palladius and palladius being the tankier one okay hardest hitting pal blazemut again an absolute beast 150 on the attack 120 defense 100 hit points but then incineram 150 melee incineram knock just like five more points in range which doesn't matter so if you're just kind of up there dueling with the incineram not a crazy pal to get or just like stumble into and just magically find on your team from an egg or something and not super tanky but decent enough stats and then it's just going to do crazy damage so yeah it is good to know the stats but there's a lot more that goes into a pal and then everything else is going to be anecdotal about oh the best pal to use for the story or the best main carry pal with this move set to beat the game with or something and the cool thing about pal world is like until it gets super hyper sweaty optimized min max and maybe that only matters in pvp or something especially with like breeding again you can just kind of beat it with anything but then there's some other stuff like okay sweepa sweepa gets stronger for all the swee that it has 100 hit points 90 defense like how hard does that scale if you have like all Sui and then good perks on the Sweepa? Is that just better? Like, does it just become a legendary? And if it doesn't go down, then I mean, just have like the strongest pal. Also, moveset interactions and gating, same type attack bonus. Who knows? A lot of a lot of wild stuff for pal combat interactions. Felbat has to be busted for the mid game. No, 100 hit points, 110 defense. It's actually a tank. It actually does damage, and its passive is insane. It gives you lifesteal while having well above average durability. Do you just actually like play your own Dark Souls combat style with this thing supporting you and then win the game? Seems like it. Price, for some reason Relaxaurus is the most expensive. I guess you might have experienced that if like you're dealing with uh, black market traders or something. Oh, and then we have other stats that get kind of crazy. So mounted speed. This is what you want to see. Ah. That's why Jet Dragon's so fast, because it has like insane mounted speed, but Phalaris, that's gonna be fast. Pyron, also pretty fast. And then we have Dire Hall right here at 950. So some pals just built different on the speed. I think this is also gonna have some early game considerations. So chill it, 800, so like 20% slower than the Dire Howl. You can also find one of the deer, 900, not that much slower. So it's like, oh, if I have a speedy or a swift or some kind of like fast uh, passive skill might come into play, but then Univolt's 1000. So yeah, get yourself a Univolt and just zoom across the land. A lot of flying pals are slow, which makes sense because it just goes over terrain. So if it's faster than a 
land mount that's kind of absurd unless it actually like justifies it by being the most in-game boss legendary Valeris, try to get that as fast as possible however you will be gated by its technology but Phalaris is interesting on the breeding combos because you can actually get it fairly early. But I don't know how it like interacts, like if you do this, where it's like, oh, Van Worm Anubis gives you Phalaris, but then to get Anubis, so all you need is Celerate, Relaxorus, Van Worm, and then you end up at Phalaris. And as we talked about, that's just one of the best pals in general. Three transporting and three fire. Also, that gives you more opportunities to funnel passive skills into it. So, I mean, you get, like, a super speedy Phalaris, and then you got a mini Jet Dragon in the mid-level 30s. That's probably just Biss. And then we have Capture Rate, which, much like damage calculation, is far too complex for me to try to break down at this time. But pretty much all the pals are going to have a base Capture Rate, and it's only some of the starting pals that have an easier chance to get caught. So the capture rate is more gated by the level. So however that ends up playing out. And then whatever the life monk statues do on top of that. Oh yeah, and also Jet Dragon, we can talk about him because it's the fastest pal. But then combat stat wise, it's going to be squishier than the others. But it still has a really high shot value. So yeah, tied for second highest. Which means really good at those ranged dragon like special attacks and stuff. But then not as durability as some of the other pals. Which makes sense because... It zooms around, so the utility also gets spread out pretty interesting. But there we go, guys. That's a breakdown of the best pals in Pal World. It's weird because it's not a direct, oh, here's the best thing in this, go out and get it. Unless you're in the ultra end game and you've already pretty much beaten the game, that doesn't really apply. However, like DLC and then when the tree unlocks and then when more content becomes available. And then someday we're going to see our first five work suitability pal and things go absolutely insane. But I think like a quote unquote best pal does have consideration for accessibility and other things you can do with it, which is why your comments down below will help kind of fill this in and create a better idea of what pals are good at what. But since the game is still complex, there's a lot of like difficulty in obtaining some of these pals. There isn't something like super objective about like the best pals and stuff and how all of that plays out. And we can kind of fall back on Pokemon for a little bit of comparison, even though it has a different kind of complexity because the abilities are a lot more varied and completely make or break a Pokemon. So slacking, 670 base stat total, but completely unusable because it doesn't get to play half the time. However, even with like Pokemon that have the similar base stat total, the stat distribution and those interactions. Not only is Dragapult the worst pseudo legendary, but it's also one of the worst Pokemon in the game, despite having 600, because the stat distribution isn't favorable. Now, less stat interactions and again, exclusivities kind of make it weird, but just because a Pokemon has the highest of a stat doesn't mean it's actually going to be an automatically viable Pokemon. So it's going to be interesting to see how important that is when it comes to Pal World. But overall, there we go. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.